want to talk through is this thing called bod mass and also formula because they relate to each other uh, and they're quite a key underpinning a part of, of, of maths generally, let alone functional skills maths. What I'm going to try and go through is explain what mod, bod mass stands for and what it is and then how bod mass impacts on completing any calculations and I'm going to look at formula and what the key feature of it and again how those features of formula impact on completing calculations. So before I do that, I am going to draw on the screen, actually, because I like the fact that I can do this. Uh, let me. There we go. So if I gave you the question uh, of uh, 2 add 3 times 4, what would you say the answer to that is in? 24. Uh, okay. Nope. <laughs> I'll explain why shortly. It might be slightly different answer from. So when we read, we normally go left to right, and so we do two add three is, is five, and add four would be twenty. Oh, no, sorry, I, I was I was well away. I was two times three. I've seen three add twice. <laughs> I thought you had. So two add three would be five, and times. Oh, the glasses on now. And that's it. That always helps. That always helps. So the answer, if we led left to right, would be twenty. However, that's not correct. I'm going to show you why that's not correct, which is very annoying. Um, it's one of those things that sometimes people say, I never learned that at school, and, and I'm not sure whether I ever did. I know they do teach it in schools now. But maths has a, a way of working out calculations or an order. So that's what bod mass is. Um, you may have heard it called bid mass. Um, there are version, variations called bed mass, and in the States they use PEMDAS. They all mean exactly the same thing. They just use slightly different words. I like bod mass, so I'm using bod mass. But bod mass and bid mass are the two ones that usually interact. And basically, bod mass, we normally read left to right, but bod mass instead tells us the order that we should do calculations in. So if we go for an example, uh, go through the letters rather. So B stands for brackets. So whenever you see brackets within a calculation, you should always do the brackets first. We'll come back, we'll come back to all this and go through some examples shortly. The O, or sometimes an I and various other things, in O stands for orders. The orders would normally squaring a number or cubing a number or square root of a number. And again, we'll come back to, to squaring the number shortly. So you do your brackets first. And then if there's any of these orders, which aren't as common, um, you would do those. And then any thoughts in maths, what DM and AS might stand for? Divide, multiply, add, subtract. Spot on. Once we've done our brackets, then we do our orders. Then if there's any division and multiplication, we do that next. And then if there's any addition and subtraction, we do that finally. Division and multiplication and addition and sub sorry, division and multiplication have the same sort of weighting to them. So you don't do division before multiplication, but you just go left to right with that, that's fine. And then the same with add and take away, you can just do those in the normal order. But you always do your brackets first, then you do your orders, sometimes those indices, which is where the I comes in, but we'll call them orders. Then you do any division and multiplication, then you do any addition and subtraction. So if I work for an example. So if we had four, I've done a slightly different to the example add. If we had four add two times three, so a nice straightforward maths calculation. If we went left to right, just reading it, we'd do four add two is six, times three is 18. If we think about bod mass though, bod mass says to do the, cap, the multiplication, or do original multiplication before we do addition and subtraction. So we need to do the two times three before we can do the addition. So two times three is six. So we actually have four add six, which equals 10. So two very different answers, 18 and 10, but only one's correct, and it's actually the bottom one. Bod mass tells us we do multiplication before we do our addition, so we need to do the 2 times 3 bit before we can add 4. If I go back to the screen right here, if you'll let me. So here, if I undo a few stages, actually it's just erase some stages. So we can erase those, and I'm going to draw that a bit prettier. So let's make that an add sign. So again, we said before, 2 add 3 was 5 times 4 is 20. Well, actually, bod mass tells us to do division and multiplication before. So we do 3 times 4, which is 12, and then we'll go back and add our 2. So the answer is actually 14. It's a very different answer. Logically, doesn't always make sense because you go left to right. That's what you used to read. And however, that, that, I can tell you, that is the correct way of working out maths because maths follows this bod mass sam sample. For example, 9 add 4 take away 3. Well, within there, there's only addition and subtraction. And I said, those just work out. You don't need to put one before the other. You could just do those normally. So with that, they've got equal and board. So we just do 9 at 4 is 13. Take away the 3 is 10. So when you've got just addition and subtraction or just division and multiplication, you don't need to worry about the other things. Um, 
it's a nice straightforward, but it's when we've got those uh, more detailed information. Slightly harder example then, let's put some indices or squaring in, and we'll also put some brackets in. So we've got six squared, that little two means squared, add two times seven, and our two times seven is in brackets. Think of bod mass again, bod mass tells us to do the brackets first, so two times seven is 14. We then have to do our orders. In this case, it's that the order is asking us to six squared. Any idea how you square a number? Multiply by itself. Fantastic. So six squared is simply six times six, it's 36. And then if we go back to our calculation, we've now got 36 add 14, so our answer is 50. So we're not going left to right here, we're doing our brackets, then we're doing our order, and then we're putting everything back together. The key is for bod mass, it's, it, you may not remember the term bod mass, maybe you will now because I've said it a hundred times already in the last five minutes. Um, it, it's not necessarily remembering the actual words, it's remembering you do brackets first, then you do the other things like the squaring or the squaring there, then you do division and multiplication and then do addition. And the key is to work one stage at a time. So a bit like I've done on the screen there to break it down into, right, I've, I've taken out the brackets and let's do that. I've then taken out the squared and let's do that and then let's put them all together. Also, it's better to do that than relying on your calculator. Depending on your calculator is set up and depending on which phone you're using or calculator or on-screen calculator, sometimes it will do correct calculations in the correct order. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes it has brackets options and sometimes they don't. So rather than just typing in your calculator and hope it works it out correct, you're better thinking, well, I'm going to do it in stages. I might use my calculator to do two times seven and I might use it again for six times six, but I'm still going to do one stage at a time. When it comes to the test, you can have as many bits of paper and pen as you want. So I would suggest doing that rather than just trying to look at it on screen and doing it all, take a piece of pen and paper, um, uh, take a piece of paper and pen and write it down and, and split it up, do the arrows and however you want to, a bit like I did uh, for this one. Um, if you need to do circles and arrows and things like that, that's absolutely fine so that you come up with the right number. So it is very worth bearing that in mind. Bod mass is brackets first, then the orders, usually squaring and things like that. Division and multiplication is the next important, and then the final important is addition and subtract. Might be a new thing. Have you come across that before? Have you ever heard of that before, Ian? We have spoken about this before, Paul, but that's a long time. We've about it, haven't we? Um, and I seem to remember you saying, I didn't do that at school. <laughs> I didn't do a lot at school, Paul. <laughs> well, no comments on that one. I certainly didn't do Bodmas, I know that. So something to bear in mind for you to work through. I mentioned formula as well then. So formula is um, what sometimes known as function. Is, 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 again, a key part of the functional skills test. It definitely comes up. You'll get a couple, at least a couple of questions on it in the test. The first thing to say is we're not talking about algebra or equations. With an equation, equation is a bit like a seesaw. And what you do is you have letters representing numbers, and you need to get them to weigh up. So if you had 2x plus 3, you've got to find out what x is to match up with 9. And in this case, x would actually be 3. 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 is 9, and we really clock. That's an equation, algebra. We don't do that within functional skills. They will always ask you to work out the answer. So they won't give you the answer and say, work out what x is or y is. They will give you the answer and try and work it out. So really, a formula is more like a, a, a mini manual instructions of how to do something. So there's lots of formulas, and actually, we could make up a random formula using random letters and anything. But one thing I am going to look at is a formula that you can use to find the area of a circle. Very common, very common in functional skills. Um, one of those formulas, if you can remember, that'll be useful. It's difficult to sometimes, but you can do. And the formula is this one, pi. That symbol is known as pi, and pi r squared. That's how you find the area of any circle. It can be written with the equal sign, so area equals pi r squared. And sometimes in the test, and it'll tell you what a stands for. It'll say a is area, pi symbol is pi, and r is the radius of a circle in this case and you will be working out what the answer is, what area is. So sometimes in tests, I'll have people look and they'll go, well, what does A stand for? What A, or what number is A? What A is what you're finding out? So you're always finding out the answer rather than trying to pick things around. So if we break this down a little bit and have a go of it. So we're gonna use that formula, and the question is gonna tell us the diameter of a circle is 10 centimeters. Pi is a standard number that was uh, came, I not came up with because it, it wasn't really invented. It was always there, if you look at maths, very uh, maths philosophical stuff. But the Greeks found pi, and it's to do with the relationship between the sides, the, the outside of a circle and the area of a circle uh, to do with its insides. Very complicated, very interesting if, you, if you're really sad and want to look into it. Um, but pi is a set number. Uh, it actually goes on for infinity number of decimal points, but we usually use the term 3.14 is, is the usual standard figure that we put to pi. 
So we've said in the formula at the top there, we're going to use pi and radius squared. I told you here the diameter of the circle is 10 centimetres. Any idea if a diameter of a circle was 10 centimetres, what the radius would be? Five centimetres. Fantastic. So diameter goes all the way across circle. Radius is halfway across. So the radius is simply half the diameter. So you're right, in this case, uh, it's five centimetres. So we know pi and we know radius is five. So let's put some maths into that. We had pi r squared. So there's no add, take away, divide or time symbol between the pi symbol and the r symbol. What we need to do, whenever you've got two symbols next to each other or a letter and a number next to each other, you always multiply them. The reason they don't put a multiplication sign in it is because quite often in maths, x is used as a letter, as an equation, so 3x equals 4y. And so it can get very confusing, particularly on computers, of whether you're talking about x the letter or x as in multiply. So the reason it says at the top pi r squared is simply to get rid of that x. So to avoid that confusion, basically get rid of the time sign and just put the symbols next to each other. But you do need to know that they are multiplied. So if we put some numbers in, we know area, we know our pi is 3.14, and we said it's times 5 squared. We said in bod mass tells us that we need to do the squaring first. So we keep 3.14 and it's times, and now it's times 25, because that's 5 squared, it's 25. And then we can go back to our calculation, 3.14 times 25 is 78.5. And because we're talking about area, it's in centimetres squared, which is the, the symbol we put together. So once again, it can seem quite daunting when you see that formula, especially if you haven't seen it before and you're a bit unsure, but the, the questions in, in um, functional skills will always give you the figures. It will tell you what the circle is. It may tell you the diameter, and you've got to work out the radius, but it will give you the data. They will actually tell you usually what pi is, 3.14, and they will tell you what the formula is that you need to work out. The key is to putting the numbers in the formula, and then once you put the numbers in, also recognizing what do I do with those functions. So. If there's a number next to a letter or two two symbols, two letters next to each other, they're always multiplied. And thinking of bod mass, we go in the same order, brackets first, then our orders, division, multiplication, and addition and subtraction. Does that make sense? Hard to yeah. jump. I can't see people's facial expressions as to whether they've uh, got that or not. So let's have a look at this one. We'll look at it together if we can. So this is a, a real life example question that you could get in functional skills, and it's about a food van. So in terms of the functional skills uh, ability of doing the test, actually the fact that it's a food van in a food zone, food zone and each pitch needs to belong to a food van is slightly irrelevant. Really, all we're worried about is the numbers and the formula, and the numbers are on the left-hand side of the screen and the formula is on the right-hand screen, and it basically wants us to fill that formula. So P is the minimum length of pitch in metres. Now, that's what we're working out again, so we don't know that. So rather than looking around and what is P, what does P stand for, we don't know what that is, so we're going to work that out. F, it tells us the length of the food van in inches, and then we've got some calculations with numbers there. What do you think is one of the first, what, what's the first thing we need to do? Obviously we need to work out what the letter F is. So what's gonna be the key here to working out the letter F? Any thoughts? Not a clue. Okay, that, that's good because that's what I'm here for, so don't worry. So F says the le is the length of the food van in inches. We can see that the food van is 23 feet and nine inches. We need the length of the food van in inches. It even says it's even bolded the letter inches. So we basically, first thing we need to do is convert our feet and 23 feet and 9 inches into inches. It tells us that one foot is 12 inches. So if, if one foot is 12 inches, how can we work out what 23 feet is? Multiply 23 by 12, add 9. Fantastic. 23 by 12. And again, rather than typing in 23 times 12, add 9, because it can confuse the computer in bod mass, we'll do 23 times 12. I've pressed the equals. Then I've added nine, press the equals. So our F figure, and you could write this down on a piece of paper so you know where you are, our F figure is 285. Go back to our formula, and our formula has got a divide sign and then an addition sign. Well, we know according to bod mass, we do division and multiplication before we do addition and subtraction. So we've got F is 285, and we're gonna divide it by 39.37, which will give us an answer. And then we're going to simply add 1.5 at the end, and that will give us an answer of 8.63. Uh, it doesn't, uh, oh, it does, it says at the bottom, round your answer to the next whole metre. So the next whole metre we're on, we're above eight and a half metres, so our next whole metre is nine metres. So the answer for this question would be nine metres. So there's a formula there that you've probably never seen before, and it's made up for this specific question. But we don't need to worry about how the formula came about or how long it's been existing or whether it's an accurate, whether it really is the accurate one for a food van. We need to look at it to give us the formula. 
It tells us what F is. The only difference here is F is in inches, and we've got it in feet and inches, so we do have to do that little bit of conversion. Once we've got F, we then put that number into the calculation. We know we do division first, so we do that, and then get an answer, and then we add 1.5 at the end. I've got lots of examples, there are lots and lots of examples of these and of BODMAS questions that I'm going to send out to you afterwards. Um, but hopefully, and this is just a short introduction, but hopefully what I wanted to go through is to be clear what BODMAS is, so brackets, then the orders, division and multiplication next, and then addition and subtraction, and that's how you use it in calculations. And some of the key features of formula, one is if you have letters next to each other or number next to a letter or symbols, and there's no add, take away, times or divide sign, you always multiply them because they've removed it in case it looks like an letter X, so you always multiply. And, and you can then use BODMAS to put into your formula your numbers and then follow the, the uh, sections through. Any thoughts, questions, comments? Any of that makes sense? <laughs> I think that's really good. I've made notes of it myself. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I've got a page of notes here. Brilliant. I have got a couple of other resources. So there's, there's, as you can imagine, there's millions and millions of, of, of web pages and videos and things out there. Uh, I must admit, I've, I've not found many videos that are very useful for it because they sometimes overcomplicate it. And as I've said, you sometimes have bid mass or bed mass, which is exactly the same thing, but it just sounds different. Uh, and then you might find a video that's from the US and they use PEMDAS, which is completely different again. It's not, it's the same thing, it just sounds different. So um, some of the, the things I'll send you after this as support things are a little bit wordy and you work through, but again, they do use work examples. And I'll send you some of the work examples for you to have a go through, uh, see how you get on, and that'll be the proof of, of whether it's understood or not. <laughs>